folks, Tom Bassel here, and today we're taking a look, it is another one of our videos where we're taking a look back at 2015 and the different games that came out. Today I want to tell you my 10, in my opinion, the 10 most innovative board games that came out over the course of a year. Now this is always kind of a subjective thing to talk about because what I think might be innovative, someone's always bound to raise their hand and say, hey, in 1994 that game came out that did this exact same thing. And so, eh, sometimes I don't know about those original games, but these are games that I think are innovative. I'll give the caveat, I didn't play every game that came out in 2015, but I certainly played a lot, so here we go. First of all, number 10 is Potion Explosion. Potion Explosion is a game in which there are marbles coming down the ramp, and you're trying to get color marbles to hit each other and then explode, and then you get points for that. Now, this isn't necessarily innovative in the idea itself because this sort of thing is in all sorts of uh, smartphone games and even, you know, starting with Bejeweled and things like that uh, and Candy Crush, etc. But this brought it to a board game, used the marbles coming down a ramp to good uh, effect. This isn't the first time we've seen a video game like this brought to a game. There's, there's Tetris has been brought to a board game and so on. But this one did it, I thought, in a unique and innovative way. Number nine is Penny Press. Now, Penny Press is a was a winner of a, a gaming contest. But what I thought was interesting about Penny Press was the covering an area, a newspaper area, and trying to get headlines and moving the headlines up and down. Honestly, many of the different mechanisms in Penny Press aren't that shiny on their own. But the way that it used putting the headlines on the paper itself and placing importance on them, I thought was a great marrying of theme two mechanisms and was an innovative way of using area control and using Tetris type pieces on a newspaper. Now this newspaper placement thing has done been done before in party games and things in the past, but this one was done in a more of a strategy style game and I thought it was worth mentioning. Number eight is Warhammer Quest, the adventure card game. Now, Warhammer Quest was trying to take Warhammer Quest and make it into a card game. And I think that they've done pretty well in that. I did not think I would be a big fan of this game because it was cards. But what I liked about this game was that it gave each person some actions to, that they would then take. And these actions would let you roll dice. But whenever you roll dice, you also were rolling for enemies. And it did a great job, I thought, an innovative job at simulating this constant struggle that you were having. Yes, I'm trying to do this action, but at the same time, I'm trying to avoid an orc who's chasing me as I'm searching this cave and this orc is coming after me. Or I'm fighting the orc and this is what I'm going to do next. And the way they mix this combat together with the different actions each player took and how each player was different and how once you use an action, you couldn't take it back until you notice another action. They did a really good job at making the different characters asymmetrical. And I was really surprised at how cool this game was. Number seven is Discoveries, The Journeys of Lewis and Clark. This is a dice game based on Lewis and Clark, a game that I was actually not that thrilled with because it felt like a very slow race. This one has a bit of that slow race thing going on, but it has rolling dice. Now, the problem with rolling dice is it's hard to make this innovative. I mean, it's, oh, Yahtzee, Yahtzee. You know, lots of things that are basically variants of Yahtzee or Can't Stop. Well, in this game, you're rolling dice Yahtzee style and trying to get different combinations. But when you use dice, they go in the middle. And instead of rolling dice, you can take dice from the middle of the board, including other people's dice. The problem is when you take other people's dice, at any point, they can recall their dice. So they have to use a turn to do so. So when you take other people's dice, that's great. You have extra dice, but they can pull them back. I've never seen a system like that where you're taking dice of other people's color and they take it back from you and or giving up your own dice knowing you can get them back later on. It made for a very tense game sometimes because you're like, I'm going to take these dice and hopefully I'll have a chance to use them before someone decides they want them back. I thought that was pretty cool. That's Discoveries. Number six is Mafia de Cuba. Now, we are in an era where there's a lot of these werewolf-style games or resistance, or who is the hidden person, the hidden traitor, these social deduction games, they're called. Mafia de Cuba is certainly one of those, but what made this game unique is it uses a box that has actual hidden physical items in it, whether they're chips or little diamonds or what have you, and you're passing this around and people are taking things out of the box, which was a really cool idea because not only did it simulate actually physically stealing from the Godfather, but it also 
did a, you know, as, as it moved around, it helped people remember, this is the role that comes next. When I take this, this will happen. There was a physical reminder. And it, it added to the theme of the game and yet presented this social deduction game in a very new and interesting way. Number five is Elysium. Now, Elysium is a game about sending people into the afterlife and talking about their great exploits. Now, Elysium had some cool things going. You used a certain number of Greek gods in the game, which was not very unique to that game, but it gave you these four uh, tokens that you had, yellow, blue, green, and red, and there were different cards that you could take as long as those tokens were in front of you. But when you took cards, you had to get rid of tokens. And this color system, as you sat there and said, okay, I'm going to take this card, and if I take this, that leaves nothing for you. There was certainly a level of interaction there. And the way that this, this was basically a purchasing system for cards, but one that I hadn't seen before, and one that I thought not only gave you some, you know, if I take this, I'll be able to get this next turn, but also allowed you to work against other players. Well, at the same time, all these cards are different actions, so you had that kind of going on. And I thought the whole thing just, it really went like a well-oiled machine. I thought it was a great, innovative game. Number four is a game many of you probably haven't heard of, and that's Mess Machine. Now, Mess Machine is an interesting, intriguing semi-co-op game, but this is one of the first times I've ever seen a semi-co-op game work really well. In this game, essentially, you're building a picture together. Think about those little puzzles you had when you were a kid where you slid things around. It's kind of like that, and you're pressing buttons to change different parts of the picture, but you're trying to guess what other buttons people will do so that the picture can, and you, you know, you try to put the picture together to get points right too, and you're pressing, it, it, it's, it's, such a, it's, it's such a difficult game to describe in a quick way, but you're trying to work together to get this picture done, and you're trying to guess how other people are going to do it, and then how many times you're going to do it, and then do it successfully. Very unique game. I thought it was a really cool idea. Number three is XCOM. This game, which, you know, I think disappointed some people when it came out because most of the pe parts that people remember from XCOM is the whole go on a mission and have aliens shoot at you and then restart your game. But XCOM was a lot of other things too, you know, buying supplies for the base, going out and shooting down the alien spaceships and basically just running the war against aliens. And that's what XCOM does. Where XCOM was innovative was it did a very good job at bringing in a smart device and using it with the game. Not as a gimmick, but as something that just basically said, okay, random event happens now. This happens here. This happens now. The game acted as a timer, but also then kind of rolled things out in a random way that, yes, you could have lots of different decks of cards probably do the same thing, but did it in a very clean style and brought a level of attention to this game and brought that over arching story of XCOM into a board game. Number two is Time Stories. Now, yes, I'm somewhat, you know, biased here because of how much I really do like Time Stories. But Time Stories, I think, um, took the, story, the Choose Your Own Adventure thing and brought it to a game in a way that made a cooperative, fun storyline really strong and interesting. Now, this is innovative and I think that it did it right okay in a sense we've seen cooperative story games before we have Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective and Murder Mysteries we've seen storytelling games and Tales of Arabian Nights but this one added in some conflict it added in clues it added in ways where players go to locations and turn cards over it added a visual element to the to the game and just trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together while still being a rollicking adventure added in the groundhog day thing where you basically when you mess up you go back and you can probably point to other games that had these things, but this game put them together in an innovative way that made a game that many people, including myself, fell in love with the first time they played it. And the number one innovative game of the year is 504. 504 feels like a mad scientist or designer experiment. Because this game comes with nine modules, and you pick one of the modules to go on slot A, one to go on slot B, one to go on slot C, and you have a board game. The board game rule book is actually a flip book where you'll flip through and put the game together. One tells you basically some rules about setup. One tells you how you score. Another one adds extra things to the game. 
And so you might play 954, you might play a war stock racing simulation, you might play an area control stock special cards game. There's 504. Now, none of the games that I've played so far have blown my mind, although some of them have been very good, and some have been good, and some have been mediocre. But the th fact is, is that this works. Now, this is innovative and unique and interesting, and you'll probably never see something like this again. But it certainly was intriguing enough and powerful enough, I thought, an innovation level to make number one on my list. So, folks, those are my top ten innovative games. What do you think? What do you think was the most innovative board games that came out in 2015? Let us know in the comments. Tell me I'm crazy for my picks. Tell me what you should have picked or maybe you want to go check out some more about these games. You can find out reviews of most of them on our website, thedicetower.com. Anyway, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Thanks so much for watching The Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.